making a Stuart model steam plant part 44. The first baseboard developed a problem. In this episode I commenced making another one using a different type of wood and showing a different method of cutting the drain hole for the sump. I've already shown this clip in another video. I wanted to show people how important it is not to use pine for a baseboard because look at this it warped. Maybe it would have been okay if I had put the planks the other way, but they needed to be the way they are, running across the board, not back to front. Being wise after the event, I went to a proper timber merchant's and bought this. This is 9 ply and it's 18 millimeters or 3 quarters of an inch thick. I had to buy a full 8x4 sheet as well, but thankfully the merchant did cut them into manageable pieces. Initially, I liked the idea of having some birch plywood for the baseboard. But when I found out how much that was, I changed my mind quite rapidly. I've used this stuff before many times for baseboards and it does the job perfectly. All is not lost, I'm going to cut up this baseboard and make some smaller ones. I will be able to flatten it out using the belt sander. This is the one I'm going to use, I'm not going to show the planking operation. But what I am going to do, just for the benefit of a viewer called Bruce who complained about the use of red silicone o-rings on the exhaust flanges. So I bought a box of black silicone o-rings. These silicone o-rings are quite weak and nowhere near as strong as the red ones. But for this application, around the exhaust flanges, they will be fine. And now Bruce, as you can see, they are no longer red. And I do agree with you that the black ones look much better. I do like to keep my kind Patreon supporters happy. In this video, I am definitely not going to show the planking operation. I will do that off camera. You've already seen the planking operation in a previous video. I've changed the dimensions slightly. This board is 17 inches from front to back, and as you can see on the board, 18 and a half inches from left to right, or right to left. I've drawn a line down the middle of the board at the center point, and here I've lined up the steel plate, which is the boiler mounting, so it's exactly in the middle of the board. As previously shown, I need to cut a square hole for the sump. When it's all finished, there will be a grating fitted over the top of the sump and the condenser will drain into there, the water gauge blowdown valve will drain into there, including the waste collector that I made to mount the double 10 V steam engine on. I bought this piece of square section brass from Blackgates Engineering and I cut it to the length that I wanted it to be. Eventually, by drawing around the piece of brass in the right place, I've marked an area that needs cutting out. The last time I did this, I used a jigsaw and I got sawdust all over the bench. Why didn't I do it outside, I hear you ask? Well, it was raining. And today it is also raining, so I'm going to try an entirely different method, which is not ideal, but it will show you how you can get good results with very modest equipment. Before I start doing any cutting, I'm moving the boiler out of the way. And also the steel plate that the boiler is going to sit on. All I need to do now is cut out this rectangular part. I'm going to use my bandsaw. This is a really old Burgess bandsaw with a quarter of an inch blade. And as you can see by the way the blade is wobbling, the bandsaw blade is far past its best. Nevertheless, if I give the blade time to cut this wood, everything should be fine. So I go in from one edge along the line and I accurately follow the line right to the end. Then quite carefully I slide the blade back down the slot and take another cut like this. I'm doing this to remove an area of wood between the marked lines so I have somewhere to work. Once this chunk of wood is removed it will allow me to rotate the board and cut out even more chunks of wood. The problem is the size of the bandsaw. This will only take a small piece of wood. By drawing around the brass box section on the other side I turn the board over to continue the cut. And eventually, bit by bit, I end up with a nice rectangle. And the good thing is, the sides are much squarer than they were with the jigsaw. This time I only need to use the file to clean up the surface of the hole. And in no time at all, the piece of brass fits in the hole quite tightly. A little bit too tightly, so a bit more filing. To experienced woodworkers, this may be a bit of a mad thing to do. But cutting the hole using this very small bandsaw really does work well. Some of my more critical viewers I'm sure will be concerned about the way the bandsaw blade has cut a slot in the baseboard itself all the way to the hole. But don't worry about that because really I don't need to do anything about it 
as the planks will join it all back together, but belt and braces approach. I'm filling the slot with cyanoacrylate adhesive and now I'm going to tap in a piece of mahogany like this. After doing that I turned the board over, applied some more cyanoacrylate adhesive and tapped in another piece of mahogany underneath. Now this is probably stronger than it was originally. I used to do this sort of thing quite a lot. A few years ago now when I used to build quite nice model steamboats I would use this method for things like cutting square hatches in the deck formers as well as making servo trays from pieces of plywood. For the next part of the job I've marked out this piece of square brass tube and here I'm cutting it using the same bandsaw that you've just seen me use for cutting the plywood. A bit of health and safety here, I'm using a scrap piece of wood to push the piece of brass through the saw. This makes the job a bit easier because the piece of brass gets quite hot when it's been cut and there's less chance of me sawing a finger off by accident which is something I can really do without. The next part of the job involves clamping a plank on the top of the wood because I want the hole to be in the centre of the baseboard when it's finished. I drilled all the way through with one imperial size drill above 5 16 When the steam plant is in use, this sump will get quite warm. The piece of brass box section that I've cut needs to stick up above the baseboard, so now I can plank underneath it to stop any heat from damaging any surfaces that the baseboard may be sat on. This is not vital, but I do like to do a good job. Now when I turn the baseboard over, you will see that this cut piece of box section sticks up level with the top of the planks. I need to do a bit of silver soldering to turn this piece of brass box section into a complete finished sump which will also support the top grating. In the previous version of this baseboard I was going to screw the grill to the mahogany but I didn't think that was a good idea. Apart from silver soldering some ends on the box section I will also thicken the sides of the piece of box section then I'll be able to drill some mounting holes for the grate in my fabrication that's yet to come. And that's it for this episode. Stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.